Tonight, we report on the ongoing repairs at the Wanapum Dam and the Moses Lake Food Bank prepares for the holiday season. What's going on in sports, Bob? The All Big Nine girls soccer team has been announced and Big Ben's men's basketball is gearing up for the upcoming season. Let's take a peek at our weather center forecast. Good to be with you, everybody. A slight chance for some light freezing rain across the entire region overnight tonight. Stronger system to impact the area. Other details in just a few moments. I'm Alan Troop, and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. The water level in the Wanapum Reservoir may start rising in as soon as six days. The contractor installed 13 steel anchor tendons and four anchor bars as part of a fix to restore a crack in the dam and prevent any further cracks from happening. A fracture in the dam's spillway was discovered in February, leading the Grant PUD to lower the water level by 26 feet to prevent it from further damage. The PUD is planning to increase the water level by 17 feet between November 24th and December 11th, if the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission agrees. Repairs are continuing through the winter and the PUD expects normal operations can start again before the 2015 recreation season. The contractor still needs to install 22 of the anchor tendons and 68 bars before the water elevation can return to normal. The shoreline will remain closed until engineers, law enforcement, and cultural resource workers determine it's safe. Two candidates for a director position on the Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District met during a forum on Tuesday afternoon. Reporter Devin Higgins has the story. It was an afternoon of questions and answers at the Moses Lake Chamber of Commerce Tuesday as the two candidates vying for a spot on the Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District Board of Directors, Chris Dexter and Tom Bennett, took part in a forum with community members. The forum was sponsored by both the Chamber and Vision 2020, and the candidates took questions from both the panel and those in attendance. Dexter was appointed to the board following the resignation of Ken Kernan in September. Either Dexter or Bennett will serve the final year of Kernan's three-year term if elected. The candidates were asked to cover topics ranging from the state of the North Dam to bringing back the Water Institute, the MLIRD's role in the community, and how revenue, resources, and equipment are allocated. The election of the MLIRD Board of Directors is Tuesday, December 9th. The voting booths open at the MLIRD office on Wheeler Road from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. In Moses Lake, Devin Higgins for iFiber One News. Two men pleaded guilty to breaking into a man's home and vehicle to find marijuana while the victim was at the Grant County Fair. Stephen Ball Jr., a 19-year-old Moses Lake resident, and Cody Kelly, a 20-year-old Moses Lake resident, pleaded guilty in Grant County Superior Court to residential burglary and theft in the second degree. Kelly also pleaded guilty to vehicle prowling in the second degree, but hasn't been sentenced yet. Ball had no previous convictions and faced between three and nine months in jail, and Judge John Antos agreed, sentencing Ball to 240 hours of community service. Ball and Kelly broke into the victim's Jeep in the fairgrounds parking lot, stealing the victim's wallet and cigarettes. They went to the victim's Ivy Street home to find marijuana and stole a video game system. Roman Vasquez is a Quincy Elementary student who is battling leukemia. His classmates showed, up, showed their support on Wednesday by wearing hats to school and raising money for the Roman Vasquez Foundation. Reporter Devin Higgins has the details. On Wednesday, the students and staff at Pioneer Elementary School in Quincy donned their best hats for Caps for Cancer in support of seven-year-old Roman Vasquez. The third grader's been battling leukemia for the last two years, and Principal Nick Bergman said he wanted to find a way to help Roman's family deal with the medical costs. Yeah, I just Googled Caps for Cancer, and um, this event came up. Uh, another school had done it, I believe, at a high school level. 
so it was cool to see it done at an elementary school level and, and the level of support that we, we've had has been really high. Last year we raised $1,200 in a single day and we're hoping to match that with today's event. Roman wasn't in class. He's undergoing his last round of chemotherapy at Seattle Children's Hospital. To help his students deal with the absence, third grade teacher Hans Schmidt lets a stuffed monkey named Caesar hold Roman's seat. Schmidt said Roman may be young, but he's also an excellent role model for his classmates. Just an awesome kid. You just couldn't ask for a better kid. He's just all energy, negative, never negative, always positive. Doesn't matter how bad he feels, he just drags himself in. He'll just, just, he just hangs in there and he just gives it 100% every day. Donations for the Roman Vasquez Leukemia Foundation can be made at the Key Bank branch in Quincy. At Pioneer Elementary School, Devin Higgins for iFiber One News. And now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be right back after this.